what are the long-acting options? Uh, I mean, we have this injectable. If the, uh, what, what else might we get? Do you think? I well, mean, so we have one other one other drug that is long-acting, but not for this population, and that's ibilizumab. Right. Yes. That it, we're going to talk it, about it, yeah. what, the newest, I guess, of the approved drugs. Right. Probably, yeah. So ibilizumab. Right? How, how are we going to use that, Eric? So it's really for treatment experienced right. patients, right. but it is administered every two weeks. Right. And it, but it is the probably the beginning of something new right. when we start thinking about the possibility of monoclonal antibodies as a therapeutic, yeah. and modifying those monoclonal antibodies so the half-life isn't allow for every two week dosing, but every four or eight or 12 week dosing. And certainly there's a lot of work going in that area, although I would argue it's still very, very early. I think it's important to point out though, ibilizumab is, is even more medically oriented and it has to be intravenously infused, which does mean it's gonna to have to be in a, in a medical situation or at least a home nursing situation right. where it can be actually yeah. set up to do it, which is more complex than the intramuscular boy, injections. Boy, is it, is it and there's no reason it couldn't be used up. in HIV treatment naive people, as long as it was accompanied by something else that also worked well. Yeah, but, There's not, nothing about it but every being, two weeks isn't going to be a game changer, probably, sure. especially like you say, it's so complicated. Yeah, and expensive. Yeah, yeah. And, and then... Oh, and expensive. Right. Maybe the price yeah. would come down if people used it. Right. <laughs> and fostemzivir, um, yeah. Paul, can you say anything about yeah. fostemzivir? Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's an, an attachment inhibitor, orally available, twice daily. Twice daily, sure. Uh, it is being looked at in the same population, very small population of patients with multidrug resistant HIV, really don't have other options. Um, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. it'll and be used by it, experts, it, exactly. right? I mean, it, it'll all, all, be for right. people who have, right. you know, really totally. multidrug resistance. I, I mean, I think, I think one, one thing that I keep having to clarify to people who don't know this field as well as we do is that the P, there are a lot of people with multidrug resistant HIV out there, but most of them are suppressed. suppressed right. Right. It's right. only for people who are failing. So it's right. a very tiny population. have been suppressed for a long time. Yeah. 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 Right. So. Yeah. Well, it's, it's good. Um, and then um, there, there are a couple of exciting molecules that are incredibly potent. There's mm. uh, uh, the yeah, 8591 or EFDA, mm -hmm. and then there's a capsid inhibitor that are incredibly potent, yeah. like picogram Amazing. levels. Um, yeah. How might they be used? Um, well, it's curious. 8591 could be used on a once a week basis, mm. but currently it's being studied on a daily basis sure. at a very small dose. Right. Uh, and there was recently was data presented last summer in which it actually was put into a slow release sort of sort of uh, implant. Mm -hmm. So the great news of it is is that it has a lot of great characteristics. <clears throat> a, a slightly different mechanism of action, which makes it more resistant to resistance right. as an in, in our TTI. Um, and the fact that it has a long lasting, but it has to be paired with something else. Right, that has similar that has similar sort lasting. of yeah. Scheduling to actually yeah. make it work. And maybe maybe this cap the capsid, <laughs> capsid inhibitor, right? right? Has a lot of similar yeah. properties. The kind of so. potency. Yep. Uh, for for lo potency. yeah, and and and, a, and a kind of a very long, uh, long half life. Um, uh, the, at least in animal models. We're very, very early stage. Very early. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And maybe more of a role in prevention than in therapy, Which or at, you know, either right. either oh. one. Um, as a single drug. Know, as a single drug. Um, you know, but. Long acting and mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, 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 you know that if there were partners for um, 8591, which is a um, it's a nucleoside, but as David pointed out, it kind of works in two steps in the reverse transcriptase process. And you know, if you could get one pill once a week, I saw that yeah. from South Carolina yeah, and Duke. Exactly, uh, mm. heaven forbid. Right near you, uh, but not you. Not <laughs> us. Yeah. Um, you uh, does not equal but, you. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah, I think that once would have. I think once weekly would have some attraction. Uh, uh, but we'll you know we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll we'll definitely see.